Have you ever heard the words, don't interrupt me while I'm talking? Or have you ever lost the plot while chatting online on multiple topics at the same time? If so, as long as you speak JSON, I have a solution for you. So, yeah. My name is Tomek Wutrembovic. I came from Poland. I work for the Star Counter, the Swedish company, when we are trying to change the world, making the awesome application platform and the fastest beta database in the universe. But I came to here to tell you about the communication with JSON. So, uh, yeah, direct collaboration using, using JSON. We all love JSON. Not only because it's simple, lightweight, uh, and cross-platform cross format, but uh, yeah, we, we, we love that, right? So, but the, the JSON and the, the JSON communication, well, J network communication in general, does have its own downsides as well. So, trafficking the huge amount of data, altering nested nodes, or changing, blinking the entire UI to, to avoid such, uh, or resolving concurrent changes, or Blocking, blocking, freezing UI to, to avoid uh, conflicts, there are only a few problems to start with. But the good thing is that we have a solution for that. So I would like to share the idea with you, show you a pattern to work with JSON uh, using the, the already settled standards, already made libraries, and well-defined, well-researched uh, algorithms to, to, to handle that. So I will use JSON. Uh, JSON patch, HTTP, and WebSockets as those standards, and OT as this algorithmic magic. But, well, honestly, it's, it's just a math. So, uh, yeah. And I would like to start from, from the bottom up, so from the JSON itself. But in case you'd like to just play it with it right now or you miss something, you can go to the GitHub or to the Bower, uh, install the Puppet.js library that covers the entire flow for you. Well, I think I don't have to advertise the JSON itself, right? Uh, but just to recall a few things, it's a JavaScript object literal that may contain nested objects, RIs, Boolean strings, and nulls. Uh, it does have its own uh, standard on ITF and ECMA, and it has a variety of implementations. So in case you don't get one, you can go to the JSON.org and just pick one from the list that fits you best. Uh, yep, so thanks to all of that advantages, JSON become a standard to, uh, as, as a data format or, or a way to express state or a view model of application. But being as such, it requires it to change quite often. So we need to think about traffic, readability, and constraints on all those levels. I'm just taking an example. Probably most of you have visited the Entrio web page to, to book a ticket, so, so did I. Uh, so I fill the form, enter my credential, and, and get a an JSON. I hope you can see that. Uh, with a message, email was not found. So I corrected the, the credentials and get, once again, the same JSON, but with something changed in the middle. But wouldn't it be better to specifically say what was the change? So to, to send a message that, hey, let's replace the error code, and let's replace the message. So there is a format, there is a standard for that. It's called JSON patch. It does have RFC, as well as the specific MIME type for that. And it's yeah, pretty readable, right? Replace where to what. Mm. So JSON patch uh, uses the six operations, three base ones, add, replace, remove, and three helper ones, test, move, uh, and copy. So the, 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 the paths are, that are used in here are uh, also standardized, there are JSON pointers, and yeah, the value is just a, just a JSON value. So uh, as you can see now, the JSON patch is more lightweight than entire JSON document. It's more self-explanatory because each operation is clearly stated. It does have built-in validation because test operation invalidates blocks entire application, application of the JSON patch in case of, of value mismatch. And it may ask as a standard between the apps, between the APIs, between your internal components, because you are now altering the document directly without a need for some spec for that. Yeah, and a cool thing about JSON is that is a, the, the JSON patch is that it's a JSON. So if your environment supports JSON, which probably it does, it can also work with the JSON patch. But the fact it can work with doesn't mean it will apply it. So for that, you can go to the Bower or NPM, 
install, for example, fast JSON patch library, which we are trying to make as fast as possible. Uh, you can attach it to, to your object and apply patches. In case you, you don't want that and you would like to have something in, in your language, you can go to jsonpatch.org and pick one from there. OK, so right now we have tiny packages. Uh, we have efficient applications of them. Our fast JSON patch handles more than a million operations per second in you know regular developer machine. Uh, it fits really great to the, the HTTP2 or the WebSockets when you can push the changes from the server. It also plays nice with the HTTP patch method when you can alter already fetched document. So now we can really think of the collaboration, real-time collaboration, right? But do we have any constraints on the JSON patch? Unfortunately, we do. The only constraint is sequential order. So the patches need to be applied in sequential order. So, well, it doesn't seem to be a uh, match of constraints, but hey, we are working with, with network, usually with JavaScript, and we'd like to apply and compute our changes asynchronously, right? So just to showcase the example, consider the, the JSON with the schedule for the conference. We have the title of conference and array of few talks with title and, and Dawn flag. So first, we'd like to replace uh, the Dawn flag to be done for the keynote, because it's already done. And then we'd like to, to remove already done uh, talks. So we get the, the result as we expected, just uh, a one talk left. OK, so what, what happens when we apply them in, in different orders? So first, we will receive, due to some networking issues, right? We, we receive them in the wrong order. So first, we, we receive the remote, so remove operation. So we remove the keynote. Then we will apply the replace on the first talk in an array, which will replace, will, which will mark the real-time collab talk as done, which is not true. So we, we, we end up with inconsistent, inconsistent behavior, right? So what should we do now? Should we log the UI and wait for the server to respawn that it acknowledged the change? It doesn't have to. So I created the, the version patch. Uh, it's not a standard. A version JSON patch, it's not a standard, it's just a, a, a proposition of a convention to work with the, the JSON patches. So it requires both peers taking part in, in communication to uh, pick a place in the JSON document, so pick a JSON pointer where to store the value. It could be directly in a root or somewhere nested in some meta object, and add it to the document itself, then to add two more operations for, for, for each JSON patch. So we'll have to test that we are working on the correct version of the document. Then we'd like to bump this version. Uh, so let's see how it works. So we got the same document. Uh, now we are receiving the remove operations, but we can spot that the version does not match. So according to the JSON patch rules, we should not uh, apply this patch. So we can put it into a queue. Then we will receive the first one. And now version matches, so we can, we can apply it. And once we apply it, the version starts to match for the, the, the previous operation. So we can remove the, uh, the, the node as well. So we finally get the consistent behavior. Yeah, but do we, do we really need to bother about that? You know, we are lazy developers. So, so we can go to Devour or GitHub, install JSON patch queue, which exposes you a pretty cool and simple uh, methods to just send and receive JSON patch, and this covers the, the queue for you. And it does not have to, you don't, does, you don't have to modify your, your original object because JSON patch queue can hide this version for you. Uh, okay, so do we have any constraints right now? Well, unfortunately we do. If you recall me asking you about don't interrupt me while I'm talking, it's about concurrent changes, simultaneous changes. So we solved asynchronous networking, but we can still uh, do asynchronous changes, so do the changes you know, simultaneously on both sides. So to showcase that, consider the same document with the schedule for the conference, but this conference is hand handled on, on two separate tracks. Let's say the, the track one is uh, handled by Alice, and the track two is handled by Bob. And it's nice to point that they don't have anything in the middle, so they can talk directly to each other. Uh, so Alice would like to mark this talk. 
So the second talk on the list has started, while Bob would like to remove the fast and FPS use talk uh, from the list because it's already done. So application of those two uh, patches, well, looks like follows as we could expect it. So the, uh, the second talk on, on a list version was, was changed and the, uh, the first talk from the Bob's version was removed. And this, so far, so good, right? But the problem starts when you'd like to exchange those messages between peers. So, uh, yeah. You can see that the first version was applied, um, but now we have the, the second versions. Uh, so right now, Alice received that, well, not only can spot that version does not match, but the problem is, is more visible on, on the Bob side, because Bob can spot right now that uh, she's supposed to replace, well, to mark the, the second talk as started, which is the lightning talks. But the lightning talks didn't start it yet, so uh, what should we do now? Should we wait for something? But there's no pending patch right now, right? Should we then ignore or, or block set changes? Wait, no, we have WebSockets, we have HTTP2, we would like to have real-time collaboration, right? Uh, so that's why we came with the multiple version JSON patch, uh, which is also my proposition for the convention to work with the uh, JSON patches. So right now, we need to agree, for, for each peer, we need to agree on the, the version. So the, the local version will work as before, so it will enforce that your changes will be applied on remote peers on sequential order, while remote versions uh, gives you a, a point in time when you are in sync with given, given, uh, given remote, so we'll be, you will have a base for uh, conflict resolution. Uh, yeah, so here we can see the example of, of ver multiple version JSON pads. So we have two versions in the document itself, and now we need to test a remote version to make sure that the remote was in, in, is in, in correct point of time, and as before, test and bump our local version. Uh, yeah, so we can see that application goes as before, um, but let's see how it works when we all try to exchange the messages. Uh, yeah, so Alice receives a patch where, which says that it was based on the, her version number zero. So, well, yeah, version does not match, so she probably cannot apply that. Bob as well. But right now, they, they are aware of the changes that they did since that time. So, Alice may say, oh, I, I replaced something in the different node, so probably it doesn't matter, I can apply that. While Bob was changing, uh, was removing an element from, from an array, and, and removing elements from an array with, in JSON patch shifts all the other elements you know, to, to fill the indexes. So, so he also changed the path of the, uh, of the node that Alice would, would like to change. So yeah, he had a conflict. But we can easily you know, think about the solution for that. Probably Bob simply needs to shift that in index, right? So he can transform Alice's operation and just by you know, bumping the version plus shifting the index. Yeah, and once again, you don't have to implement it by yourself. You can go to the Bower or GitHub and download it. Uh, okay, but now we know when we should resolve conflicts or where, where they are, and that we briefly know that we should somehow transform those operations, but how should we do that? Should it be some kind of, of, of magic, some kind of sophisticated artificial intelligence or complex inverting, rebasing uh, stuff? It doesn't have to be. There's a thing called operation, operational transformation. This is this uh, magic algorithm that I mentioned. So it's, it's well-researched stuff. You can find tons of papers over the internet over that. Probably some of you may recall the, the Google Wave or the Apache Wave right now. Uh, yeah, and as far as I know, Google Docs were also use the, the OT, but not for the JSON patches. Uh, Yep, so as I said, it's, it's just a math, it's just an algebra on operations. So we can consider those operations that we have seen, and Alice has to transform or compose uh, Bob's operation against her operation. 
And as we already said, uh, her change should not affect Bob's change, so, so she may keep it, while uh, Bob needs to transform his operation against, uh, well, uh, Ali's operation against his uh, change, so he needs to shift an index, right? So generally speaking, oh, sorry, the slide is quite out of date. Uh, so as you can see in here, Alice will need to keep a track of changes that she made since the time of n. So once she will receive the, the change from Bob, that, that's the x change of Bob, but based on the Alice nth version, she's now, uh, she now knows that she should transform his operation against all the changes she made since the time m above, time, time m plus 1 above. And she could as well remove the history of, of changes from, from 1 to n, to, to n because she now, she now is sure that Bob acknowledged all, all of the changes up to m. Uh, yeah, but we have six operations in JSON patch and unknown amount of weird conflicts and patches, so it's quite a lot. Luckily, we can reduce that number somehow. Plus, there is a library for that in the internet which covers quite a lot of transformation for you. Uh, yeah, and, and the cool thing about JSON patch is that we implemented it a year ago, and since that time we used it quite extensively, and it works. So that's the beauty of math. Once the, the algorithm is solved, it's solved. So putting it all together, we have JSON, JSON patch, JSON patch Q, ver multiple version JSON patch, JSON patch OT, it's quite a lot of stuff to handle. But there's also a solution for that. We have Puppet.js, a library that covers entire flow for you, so you can just, you know, connect it to a remote, you can specify it, either it will use localhost, and just change the object as it will be a, a synchronous local one. And it supports web sockets, HTTP, single page applications, you can specify remotes, disable OT if you want to, and it works. And, and if you are a, a huge fan of web components, as I do, there's a custom element for that. So we can put a, a HTML element into your code, and it bounds a, a JS object into your DOM API. Quite declaratively, isn't it? So, what now? We have asynchronous, distributed, concurrent, and consistent collaboration. Well, in fact, it's eventually consistent because you are at least one version ahead, but it's fair enough. And we have implementation in JavaScript and in C Sharp by a star counter. Uh, yeah, so you can imagine what to do. I can just showcase you an example. We use that for the UI, to building UI with server driven view models. So, so server acts as a master, as a puppeteer of a puppet in client side. So, so, so the puppet, so the view model, the, sorry, the, the HTML client is only responsible for, for making cool view while entire business logic lies on the server. Yeah, so now it's up to your imagination, right? Uh, you are not limited to the hour use case, right? It should work in, in any kind of P2P connection as well. So imagine what you can do if, if your networking collaboration on JSON behaves like synchronous local one. Uh, yeah, Fala, it's all from me. Uh, I hope you like it. Here is a bunch of, of links if you need some. Uh, I strongly advise check a visualiza visualization one. Uh, you can visually check how OT behaves for your case. Do we have I cannot time? believe that that was his first talk. That was really good. Oh, Great thanks. job. Uh, so do you, do you work for Puppet? Is that... What I yeah, gathered? the puppet okay. is the project of me and the margin that was speaking in here okay. uh, last year, uh, and a few follows more. Yeah. Uh, I work for Star, Star Counter, which is okay. the, the company that tries okay. to follow the same path. Great. So that was my question. What are your questions? Who has a question for, for Tomek? Anything? There's one way in the back there. Anyone on this side that I can get to? No? Okay. Uh, yeah, could you, for example, revert these patches? Could you? have sort of a history view of all the changes? Well, the thing is, uh, I believe that version JSON patch and multiple version JSON patch uh, makes it a lot easier to, to handle history, undos, and stuff like that. But for our case, I, I think there are separated problems, right? To keep data in sync and to keep the, the history of changes. So you can implement the, the history on top of that as well, 
but it's, you know, OT is not for the, the history reverting. It's just for keeping your, your flow into sync. I have a question. Uh, sure. You mentioned multi-versioning. Yep. It seems to me that that's not going to scale very well. How do Why? you handle that? Well, well I we, mean, if you have like 15 people, I guess you solve it with the, with the math. Uh, well, honestly, we, we didn't test it yet. OK, I'm not going to go back there. We, we, we didn't uh, test it well, but from our perspective, theoretically, it should be possible because each peer should only transform the patch he or she receives against her or, or his changes. So he don't need to bother about the changes of the other peers. So the version, versions from the, the uh, remote peers are only you know, to make sure how far they acknowledge your changes.